Baseball has always been a game of numbers, but in recent years, one system has changed how we measure everything on the field. StatCast. From pitch velocity to batted ball speed, from defensive range to base running efficiency, StatCast has revolutionized baseball analytics. But with all of these numbers, it's easy to get lost. What do terms like barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and sprint speed actually mean in regards to baseball performance? And more importantly, how can we apply them? In this video, we'll break down what StatCast is, how it has evolved over time, and how to interpret its most important metrics. By the end, you'll know exactly how to use StatCast data to evaluate players like a pro. StatCast is MLB's advanced tracking system, designed to measure every movement on the field in real time. But this didn't start overnight. Let's take a look at how we got to where we are today. PitchFX was rolled out in 2006, and it was the first iteration of ball tracking technology. StatCast had not yet been rolled out yet during this time, but the PitchFX system certainly laid the groundwork for what it would turn into. Utilizing a three hard-mounted camera system in all Major League Baseball parks, it helped us quantify for the first time things like how a pitch moved, how fast it was thrown, where it was released, and where it crossed home plate. This may not seem like much, but it was a huge step into the future for baseball analytics. PitchFX provided basic pitch tracking, but didn't measure batted balls or fielding so there's certainly room for improvement. Then, in 2015, we entered the TrackMan StatCast era. Starting in 2015, all 30 Major League Baseball parks had been outfitted with this new Doppler radar technology that is still in many minor league and collegiate parks today. This new ball tracking technology provided analysts with a ton more information on each pitch thrown during games, as well as opening up the world of batted ball data to allow us to evaluate hitters more accurately. In combination with the Chiron Hago player tracking cameras, the start of the StatCast era was tracking every single thing happening on the field. From describing release points down to a fraction of an inch, to exactly where the ball makes contact and lands in the field, to the route and speed of an outfielder, baseball had a data point for everything. And so, for about a five year span, things were good. Models were being created utilizing this massive database of information that we were collecting. Public websites like Baseball Savant were becoming more in-depth, ingesting this data and making it easily available for the public to consume. How could we possibly improve this system? In 2020, we introduced Hawkeye. This 12 high-speed camera system used to not only track all of the same data that both TrackMan and those Chiron Hago cameras could, all in one system, but it also takes it a step further to include biomechanical data. In this new system, we get data points for exactly where the catcher's glove is set up as a target, and we can compare that to where the pitch actually was caught. We can see the exact plane of the bat as it goes through the zone, and also give us a better measure of in-game bat speed. This new system is pretty legit. It measures pitch movement, defensive player and base runner positioning, sprint speed, and even biomechanics. Using Hawkeye has unlocked a new wave of information that we never had access to before and there is still a ton to learn. And that catches us up to where we are today. The StatCast system is powered by Hawkeye, the most advanced tracking system baseball has ever seen. It's hard to imagine what might come next, but for now, this technology is here to stay. But knowing how StatCast works is just the beginning. The real question is, how do we use all of this data? Let's break down some of the key metrics and what they actually tell us about player performance. Starting with barrel percentage. Barrel percentage is the best indicator of power. A barrel is a term that has been used to describe a batted ball for centuries. Hitting the ball on the barrel has always been referred to as ideal. Now we just have a way to measure it. In analytical terms, a barrel is a batted ball with the optimal combination of launch angle and exit velocity. These are the hardest hit balls that lead to extra base hits and home runs. For a ball to be classified as a barrel, it must have an exit velocity of at least 98 miles per hour and a launch angle between 15 degrees and 30 degrees. As we've mentioned in a previous video, as that exit velocity number increases, the acceptable launch angle range expands. For example, a 98 mile per hour ball needs to be between 26 degrees and 30 degrees to be a barrel. A 110 mile per hour ball can be barreled between 8 degrees and 50 degrees. Why does this matter? Well, a high barrel percentage is going to describe your power hitters. Think Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani. And a low barrel percentage will equal weak contact or poor launch angle control, so ground ball heavy hitters. 
If a player has a high barrel percentage, but a low batting average, they may just be unlucky. So you should check their expected stats to see how they should be performing. Next, we have hard hit percentage, the contact quality stat. Hard hit percentage is the percentage of batted balls over 95 miles per hour or harder. Why 95? Well, balls hit above this threshold have a significantly higher chance of being hits. Weekly hit balls are more likely to be outs, regardless of launch angle. Why does this matter? Well, a high hard hit percentage is going to equal consistently strong contact. A low hard hit percentage is going to be more weak contact ground balls and pop-ups. This stat is great for identifying hitters with legitimate power. For those who are getting lucky with bloop hits. Next, we can take a look at sprint speed, measuring the true speed of players on the base paths. StatCast tracks sprint speed, measured in feet per second, over a player's fastest 30-foot split. What is a good sprint speed? Elite is going to be 30 plus feet per second. Think Trey Turner. The MLB average is 27 feet per second, and your slow range is going to be below 24 feet per second. You can think catchers and those older veterans. You can apply this by helping teams evaluate base running ability. You can also use it to determine how well an outfielder covers ground out there. Think outs above average. And it's useful for projecting stolen base potential. Overall, MLB teams and analysts use StatCast data for player development, identifying weaknesses and optimizing training, scouting and trades, finding undervalued players based on StatCast trends, and in-game strategy, including pitching matchups, base running decisions, and the now restricted defensive shifts. For fans, Baseball Savant, which we covered in one of our last videos, is the best place to explore StatCast metrics on your own. By the way, speaking of tools to measure performance, have you tried PitchLogic? It's a smart baseball that connects to your phone, providing real-time metrics like spin rate, velocity, and pitch movement, just like what StatCast is measuring. Whether you're a player looking to improve or an analyst breaking down stats, PitchLogic is a game changer. Check out the link at the top of the description to learn more. Why StatCast metrics matter? To apply these metrics, let's take two players and compare both their stat line and their stat cast data. Player A has a 250 batting average, a 320 OBP, and he's hit 20 home runs. He has a low barrel percentage at 4.5% and a hard hit percentage at 32%. Player B then has a 230 batting average, a 300 OBP, and only 15 home runs. However, he has a high barrel percentage of around 12.5% and a hard hit percentage of 48%. At first glance, player A looks better, but player B's stat cast data suggests that they are hitting the ball much harder and could be underperforming. This is an oversimplified example, but it's the whole idea behind why stat cast metrics are so important. Your stat line is going to be the thing that matters come the end of the year, but when your metrics say something different than the way that that athlete is producing, that's when things start to get fun. For example, this can be used for a player in a slump who has been consistently hitting the ball hard right at people. You wouldn't want that hitter to change his approach if he has a good barrel percentage and hard hit percentage. You want him to keep doing exactly what he's doing, because in the long run, those will start to turn into hits and then extra base hits, which will help bump his stats up. StatCast metrics allow us to understand a player's potential, and it gives us an accurate understanding of how we got to his final slash line. Is a player underperforming, and will that turn around? Looking at a stat sheet just doesn't give us that full answer, so we need to rely on these metrics to help us make informed decisions when it comes to player development and acquisitions. StatCast isn't just a tool for analysts, it's a window into the game's hidden details. By understanding different StatCast metrics such as barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and sprint speed, we can better evaluate players, separate luck from skill, and even predict future success. Whether you're a fan, coach, or a fantasy baseball player, StatCast metrics give you an edge in understanding the game beyond the box score. And hey, if you'd like to support Simple Saber Metrics, check out our merch. You can find it in our website or in the store tab right here on the channel. Every purchase helps us bring you more deep dives into baseball stats and analytics. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, check out the videos on the end screen now. We've got more content on advanced stats like WOBA, XWOBA, and launch angle and exit velocity. Those videos are handpicked to help you keep exploring the numbers behind the game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week here on Simple Sabermetrics.